What happened with the radium girls in the 1920s is something we don't talk about nearly enough. But Kate Moore stepped up to the plate in her nonfiction book, The Radium Girls, which she was inspired to write after having directed a play on the subject. This is a topic I've been fascinated with ever since I saw a play about it performed at a nearby high school. But reading Kate Moore's writing of the story made me appreciate it even more. I'm going to talk about how that was in today's video, my book review of The Radium Girls. But before I do, I want to give a warm welcome to anyone who's new to my channel. In addition to book reviews, I post a new video essay at least once a week on a different topic. With all the series and playlists of essays I have on my channel, one of them is bound to cater to your interests. So once you've found it, smash that subscribe button and tap the bell icon so that your phone goes off every time I post about something you might want to hear more about. But now it's time to talk about how Kate Moore's The Radium Girls helped me learn more about what the Radium Girls went through and how they accidentally revolutionized workplace safety and workers' rights. I start every book review by explaining what the book is about, so now I'm about to do that with the Radium Girls book. As the title and tagline implies, Kate Moore's The Radium Girls tells the dark story of America's shining women. Moore was inspired to learn more about the Radium Girls and write down what she learned after a directing a play about this historical event entitled Our Shining Lives. The book is divided into three parts into which Moore tells the story of the Radium Girls based on historical research she did using primary sources and first-person accounts. Part one is knowledge, part two is power, and part three is justice. In part one, Moore tells of how Radium, the Curie's new wonder drug, shone bright in the otherwise dark early years of World War I, how young girls used their lips to point paintbrushes when painting dial watches in Radium dial factories, and eventually started to fall mysteriously ill, and many didn't survive. In part two, Moore tells of how those women who did survive sought to demand compensation from the radium companies and also dealt with claims that these, from these companies that they could not possibly be responsible for these girls' illnesses. In part three, Moore tells of how these companies were finally made to own up to what they'd done to these women and why that matters today. As the back cover, cover summary puts it, written with a sparkling voice and breakneck pace, the Radium Girls illuminates the courage and tenacity of these incredible women whose determination to fight back led to life-changing regulation, advanced nuclear research, and ultimately saved thousands of lives. Now that we know the, what this book's about, let's hear my opinion of it. So what did I think worked about this book? Well, first of all, they tell the whole story of the Radium Girls and don't try to sugarcoat it. What happened with the Radium Girls was a dark and grim story that consists of gruesome illnesses and tragic death. Kate Moore tells the whole truth of what happened to these women, and let me tell you, the pictures she paints with the words are graphic. Throughout the book, you'll read vivid descriptions of jaws and teeth falling apart, sores, bleeding, pus, and ultimately, death brought on by radium poisoning. Kate Moore does not hold back on these descriptions of the radium girl's slow, painful deaths. This is important for historical accuracy and understanding for their stories, but makes this book one that is not for the squeamish and faint of heart. Another strength is that Moore draws in perspectives from many of the different radium girls. There were many women afflicted by radium all throughout the years in which radium dial watches were made. So of course, not all of their stories were the same. The stories of many different radium girls over the span of many years are told, each affected in a different way, and each with a different past, family life, spirituality, personality, and perspective of their situation. 
It made the story so much more interesting to read about how different women experience the work and its effects differently. Now, what didn't I like so much about this book? Well, the pacing was a little slow for my taste. The story of the Radium Girls is definitely an important one that's all too often overlooked, but it doesn't exactly take 400 long pages to tell. In places, it seems as though Moore is dragging at the story out pretty far. She spends an awful lot of time talking about every little thing from the lip pointing to an individual Radium Girl's illness and death to their backgrounds, their personalities and social gatherings, and even the lawsuits. Of course, much of this serves the narratives, but there were many parts I felt could be cut out for the sake of brevity. Also, the book gets a little repetitive here and there. Another problem with the slow pacing is that I often felt a sense of deja vu in the stints of reading I did. As I've previously mentioned, Moore tells many different girls' stories throughout the Radium Girls. Although they're all unique in their own way, I often felt I was hearing the same details over and over again. Just like with the pacing, the repetition could be resolved by re- Moving a few of the girls, Moore decided to place specific emphasis on. What did I think of this book overall? Out of five stars, I give Kate Moore's The Radium Girls four stars. I found this book at Barnes & Noble back in February after asking an employee if they had any books on the subject of the deformed Radium Girls. They took me upstairs to the science section and showed me this one. I was pretty interested in reading more about the subject, and a big, thick book on it seemed to be just what I was looking for. Only thing is, 400 pages and all these glossaries, index, dedications, and other resource pages were a little more than I was looking for. But the parts that grabbed my attention gave me new insight and taught me things about the Radium Girls and their fight for justice that I'd never even thought of before. Thank you all so much for watching my review of Kate Moore's The Radium Girls. It's really just one of the many sources that shed long overdue light, such as those from Radium Dial Watches, on a group of women who were poisoned by their employers and found the courage to fight back. I'm glad to say that one of them is a previous video of mine on the subject of the Radium Girls themselves, which I've included a link to in the description and on your end screen. There as well as on my channel page, you can find all kinds of video essays on so many different topics. Some of them are book reviews, like this one, or on literature in general. Topics I make videos about include music, television, social justice issues, current events, disabilities, sexism and feminism, LGBTQ issues, spirituality and religion, history, art, nature, gemstones, and so much more. If you haven't seen any of these, check out the playlist that appeals to you most, then smash that subscribe button, and that's your card to my video essay library. But if you want your phone to go off when I post new content you might enjoy, click on the bell next to the icon that says subscribed and switch it on to all notifications.